Yo, how is it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This time we're doing tips and tricks for Rakan. This has been a highly requested one. And in my opinion, Rakan is Giga Ultra Omega Super Cucumber Broken right now. If you put the time into him, you will become one of the more annoying champions in the game. Overall, I think this champion just kind of overtuned right now. Tip number one, super simple. If you don't know already, if you are before you W, you can guarantee your W landed. That's the standard Rakan combo, but I have seen some people, especially at lower levels, uh, forget that they can do this. Tip number two is also R related. And it's also very very simple r has a cast time and you can't instantly w after you r so to cancel this you can just use your e as an animation cancel and then immediately use your r this is actually really really important for stuff like engaging out of vision on rakan so you can e to an ally who is you know slightly in front of you and then like pop out of vision and basically instantly combo somebody and also you have to remember you can't flash during your r cast time which is very you know another reason why you'd want an animation cancel the next tip is again very simple your q actually heals you on epic monsters so when you're doing drake when you're doing barons and you're doing heralds things like that remember to heal your jungler or heal whoever it is is face tanking it's just a lot of hp and the next point is something that you need to keep in mind now nine out of ten times you'll be doing the first combo i showed you in the video which is alting into using your w on the target you want to cc to chain cc them um, however if you want to extend the duration of that chain cc for the maximum because if you think about it your r charms them for one second and then you knock up after about 0.3 seconds so you're kind of overlapping a bunch of things so if you want to cc the target the maximum amount first you use your w and then wait until they land and then you use your ult. That just extends the CC for the maximum duration. Only do this if you know that they can't get away from your W. The next point is very quickly about Revitalize. So Revitalize does work with Rakan passive. However, the bonus shielding you get below 40% HP actually does not work normally on Rakan's passive shield. Well, technically he does, but it disappears after you don't take damage or you're out of combat for a tiny amount of time. The next tip is also about Rakan's passive. And you have to remember that if the shield isn't fully broken, it actually regens itself after five seconds so if you can in lane it's actually kind of useful to take small short trades with using your shield back out for five seconds and then go back in if you're trading auto attacks and you're only going to tank one auto your shield will stay alive and then you can regenerate it oh and by the way guys this series is getting a huge amount of love from you guys so if you enjoy it and you want to see another champion leave it in the comments leave a like and i will keep doing more so the next point is all about rakan's q now rakan's q was heavily buffed in the recent patches so if riot decides to nerf it down the line it may not be this strong so q will actually actually proc even if you throw it at someone and they spell shield it you'll still get the heal from it so it's, you know kind of useful against champs like sivir another thing is the q heal if you're standing on an ally is instantaneous that means you don't need to wait for the projectile to return to you this again can be useful if for example an ally is about to take lethal damage and you want to try and bait enemies in thinking they're gonna die etc but just keep that in mind you can sort of pop it for an instantaneous heal if you're standing on an ally and finally, Q flash actually works. So you can Q and then flash if you ever have the urge to flash around a minion and one-shot people. Um, the only reason I mention this is because Rakan's Q actually got buffed and it does kind of stupid damage if you put points into it. The next point is all about his W. If you've ever watched Rakan in pro play, you've seen a lot of pro players using Rakan like this. So what I want you guys to learn is the limits of his W, his, the ranges and the walls that you can get over. And therefore, this allows you to face check a lot of brushes in a lot of situations where most supports can't face check brushes. And you'll also be able to ward and you know, walk into the enemy jungle and clear their pinks without actually being that scared of the enemy team. And finally, another really useful tip I found on Rakan is Rakan's E actually puts you on the opposite side of the target. This can be way more useful than you think for dodging things like skill shots or for face tanking skill shots for your AD carry or you know the Nautilus hook is being thrown at someone. Just keep in mind, so if you're right next to your AD carry and you really want to be on the other side of them, you can just tap E to do that very quickly. Oh, and this also comes in handy when you're chasing because if you max range use E on a target, you'll end up slightly further than you would if you just used E on them. Normal. Now, before you go into the rift with Rakan, I want to give you guys a couple of really quick gameplay tips, just generic things that you should be looking out for in every single game of Rakan to really pump up your elo. First general gameplay thing is don't neglect Rakan's passive. It, the shield may be small and the cooldown might be really long in early levels, but it does add up over the course of the laning phase. So remember to keep in mind when your passive shield is up. And if you can, use the earlier tip I gave you, which means if you can take small trades and regen his shield, it will really, really start to add up over the course of three or four trades. And another really useful tip is you don't always actually have to dive as Rakan. Rakan's R is your most reliable CC. It's like the guaranteed way you can lock down targets or characters by just pressing R and you know connecting with them shoving your body in their face so in knowing that you don't actually need to be diving and 
being the first person in the fight at all times. For example, against champions that have to dive your AD carry, champs like LeBlanc, Samira, Leona, you don't need to be the person flashing forward and going in. Sometimes it can be just as useful to stand directly on your AD carry's face and wait until the Jax jumps in, then use your combo. This is something that I also like doing against LeBlanc. If you can predict where LeBlanc's gonna W, you can just bait her in, press your R as soon as she W's past you, and you know, just one shot her. This is also why starting with a combo by flashing directly on the enemy's face and then pressing R can actually be a really reliable way of getting onto them. If you think the enemies might just you know, flash or dash away from your normal combo. So another thing that I've seen a lot of lower elo players miss out on is Rakan's auto attack range is kind of cucumber busted. For some reason, Riot gave this guy like half a lane's worth of auto attack range for a melee champ. So really abuse that in lane. For example, when I'm laning as Nautilus against Rakan, I can't really fight him for the brushes easily because he just outranges me and he'll auto space the hell out of me when I try and walk up to the brush. So, you know, slap them with your feathers and just be really, really aware of the fact that you can hit a lot of melee champs when they can't hit you. And I do have to mention this as a general gameplay tip. I see a lot of Rakans, they get really obsessed with spamming their E. Don't be spamming E for no reason, okay? You need to keep in mind your E is a mobility tool. The shield is definitely useful, but it's more of a utility tool to get you in position. Your shield, doesn't really turn the tide of most fights. It's getting you in position to alt, to W, or to even proc your guardian or things like that. So just, you know, don't double spam your E. You can spam your E once you have lower cooldowns, but generally speaking, you're gonna be using your first charge of the E to position, your second charge of the E to reposition. And if you can, try your best to bait out enemy spells and then use E. And finally, as kind of a new addition to this tips and tricks series, I'm gonna try and go through a couple of really quick ways you can play Rakan in fights. Now, to be honest, there's about a bazillion different ways you can play Rakan in fights. He has so much mobility, so many dashes, that if you're creative, you can do almost anything on this champion. But I'm gonna try and give my perspective as a good starting point for what you should be thinking about on Rakan. Point Number one is really simple, but flanking on Rakan is Omega broken. This is generally what I would recommend most new players to Rakan look for in teamfights. You want to be looking for the moments when Rakan himself is not going to be charging straight through three or four people because there's a lot of skills that can stop things like Rakan dashes, you know, Gragas E or, you know, uh, someone using Cassio W on you, etc. But if you're coming in from behind them, there's so little that the enemies can do to stop a good Rakan from engaging. When you're looking for engages, sometimes the best engage Gauge is actually the one that comes from behind and not the one that's just, you know, in an ARAM walking up to the enemies as five people. And number two is going back to one of the tips I gave earlier, which is you don't need to always be the engager in Rakan. Rakan is an excellent champion at peeling. He can face tank a lot of spells and use his HP bar as a shield as well, and then dash away knowing that he's got so much mobility that he's going to be safe in the middle of the fight. Sometimes it's better to sit directly on Zaya's face and just wait for the enemy team to dive and play the fights out reactively because again, Rakan does not need to be the primary engage to still be an extremely powerful champion. And finally, something I think Rakan is also extremely underrated for is tower dives. In my opinion, Rakan is almost like an Elise when it comes to tower dive. Because he has so many dashes and so much move speed and mobility, Rakan's HP is a lot more flexible, let's call it, under a tower than other champs. You can go in, engage on the enemies, tank a lot of towers, and then dash out using everything even without having to use flash and still get most of your spells to actually connect. It's really, really broken, and just keep in mind that if there's an enemy that you can CC, face tank, and then use your E to get out of tower range for, I would say go for it. In general, Rakan's you know, really great at baiting out enemy spells and making them waste things when he knows he has the ability to get out of the situation. Well, that's all I have for you on Rakan. If you want to see another champion, leave a comment down below and I will get to it. And if you're enjoying this series, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe. Other than that, good luck in solo queue abusing this disgusting champion, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.